Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, uh, thank you for having me here. It's always, uh, you know, it's always a bit of a challenge uh, speaking after two people who have built and, you know, grown such uh, iconic brands. But uh, I think the, I again reiterate that it is a very appropriate topic uh, because, you know, demystifying brands because uh, brands are, are actually magical things. If you do it right, there is an alchemy to it. And uh, the two gentlemen, Dr. Ravikant and uh, Abhishek before me, have proven to us how, uh, how magical they can be if, they do, if you do it right. I have a confession to make. I was going to, uh, I mean, I knew these, that uh, Ravi and Abhishek were before me and, and they would have a lot of experience to share. And uh, I was very tempted to actually do my whole presentation around what has built, what has made brand Modi. But then I thought it might get me into trouble. So I've, uh, I've uh, actually looked at, a, at all the work that we have done for various brands. And, uh, and I will show you actually that the two gentlemen before me, whether they know it or not, have followed all the rules of the game. Uh, the not happening. Okay. The first thing to remember about uh, about building a brand is that consumers are people, and they don't wake up every morning thinking about brands. They wake up wake up in the morning thinking about what to put in their children's tiffin box. Uh, what is the boss their boss gonna what you know mood is the boss gonna be in? They wake up thinking about sometimes, you know, who they're going to vote for that day or uh, will the maid come on time. They don't wake up thinking about should I drink Pepsi or Coke. But brands have to wake up every morning thinking about consumers. Actually, they have to wake up every morning thinking about people because consumers are people and all consumption is in a context. It's not isolated of, of, of anything. So, and that's even more true today when uh, technology has fundamentally changed consumer behavior. And uh, what is, and you know, the origin of that, as we all know, is the, is the mobile phone, the internet, and most specifically the mobile phone, which has empowered consumers in ways that we never suspected would ever happen. The mobile phone today is uh, the, their digital companion. It's a map, it's a calendar, it's their digital diary, it's their library, it's everything. And they live on, they practically live on their mobile phone. And, you know, this is not new news. But what it has done is it has actually had many other ramifications that brands need to recognize. One is that the mobile phone is actually, uh, digital is a social equalizer. There is no one, no one is actually behaving the way marketers think that they should behave. Nobody ages anymore. Uh, everybody has similar aspirations because they have similar exposure to, uh, to you know, similar things. And so social class is, act is actually disappearing as we have also seen in, this, in the recent election. Uh, social equality is happening. The other thing that is happening is that the, it's all about me now. It's about me and my interests and my, uh, my niche target segments. Uh, you'd be surprised at the kinds of WhatsApp groups that exist nowadays. There is uh, something called the Rajput Samaj of Karnataka is a, is a group and a newspaper. We know that there are people coming together as common interests. So the Royal Enfield, for instance, is a great example of how uh, a brand has managed to tap into that niche and tribal mentality. And there is also the need to showcase, which is becoming very heightened now. TikTok is the, I'm sure all of you have heard of TikTok, uh, is the prime example of that. Uh, in fact, yesterday or a couple of days back, I was in a lift and I had these two young girls in the lift and they, one of them was saying to the other, Aaj ka TikTok video bana diya. She said, Mainne to kali bana diya tha, main ready thi. Okay? 
So that's the level of, I mean, it, that's the level of, what should I say, involvement with TikTok. Uh, the other thing that is happening is that uh, trust has become a very valuable asset. It is, there, is a, there is a genuine deficit of trust. Large corporations are not trusted any longer by consumers. They trust themselves and they trust their peer group. Uh, so which is why uh, the, the mobile phone is used to check, recheck. It's, it's, actually, it's actually their finder. It is, uh, they find information, they check it, they ask each other. Uh, showrooming is a very common phenomenon now where you, you, know, you go to a showroom but you check stuff online or versa, vice versa. And there are meta search engines, there are meta search engines for meta search engines as well. So that's their source of information, no longer the ma manufacturer. Um, and consumers today are buying not just benefits but products and this is something that both Ravi and Abhishek spoke to us about, which is, uh, you know, Indigo is not just about flying, it's about flying on time. Fab India is not just about buying a kurta, but ha actually helping you empower pe people who make those kurtas. And, uh, and there is a great, uh, uh, you know, there is great affinity with brands that recognize this. Uh, I promised one of my team members I would say this. I don't think that that should have plastic bottles uh, in their uh, uh, in their conferences because sustainability itself is a huge benefit now for consumers. Uh, which brings me to the next point of taking a stance. Uh, br uh, consumers appreciate consumer value brands that take a stance if they are. Uh, uh, social activists, if they take break taboos, if they do any of that, today's consumer appreciates that and is and, and finds great value in it. And uh, also, the there as you know, and the, I think that uh, diagram that Ravi showed us was about this: that brands are uh, searching. The the interaction is both online and online, and the uh, and there are multiple touch points, and every interaction influences the other. So, which is why you know online retailers are setting up brick and mortar, and and vice versa. Uh, so, in this context, uh, given this background, what is happening is that uh, all of this is impacting consumer loyalty. This is data from a study that we run uh, called TGI, which is actually showing that both brand loyalty and personal loyalty are dipping. So it's, I don't, uh, uh, you know, my family is no longer the most important thing, and my friends are more important. And once I find, once I use a brand, I tend to stick to it, it's dropping, which means that, uh, what consumers are saying are the, is that they're bec becoming far more experimentative, they're becoming far, more, far less loyal. So in this environment where one is growth is, coming, is becoming harder and harder to get and consumers are becoming less loyal, how does a brand grow? How does a brand grow in this polygamous, polygamous uh, environment? Uh, so there is one school of thought and uh, uh, which says that uh, penetration is king. And this is not, uh, this is not uh, new thinking. This is thinking uh, which was popularized about 50 years back, which says that uh, penetration is king because uh, small brands, penetration really means more people using your brands uh, versus loyalty, which is the same people using your brands more often. Why is it on a slippery slope and why is it called je double jeopardy is something that uh, has been in the last 10 years popularized by Byron Sharp, who's written a book called How Brands Grow. And uh, this basically says that if you're a small brand, you, have, you, you run two risks. One is that there are fewer people using you and then the people who use you don't use you enough. So the, the route to growth is actually to get, just get more people to use you. But the problem with that is that every year, and this is, uh, sorry. Uh, 
Why is this color? is that uh, penetration is actually a leak, leaky bucket because every year, and this is data that we have from uh, you know, all the work that we've done, it says that uh, uh, you will actually lose half your customers every year. FMCG brands, 50% of them lose 50% of their consumers every year. So the way to, uh, but you get new customers, so you kind of balance each other out, but that doesn't lead to growth. So the, so you have, in a sense, what you have to do is to tip the scales. You have to find a way by which you can outrun, uh, outrun uh, yourself by getting in more people or getting more people to use you or getting them to use you more often than them leaving you or lose, leaving you. So we've, uh, there are different paths to growth. This is data from our household panel, which we run in 36 countries and uh, um, you know, some 86 categories, and it's over some one billion uh, purchases. What we did was we took 26% of, of, of all these brands, are brands that actually grew, even if it was only by about 0.5%, and we looked at how they grew. And what we found was that only 10% grew uh, by frequency or loyalty. 30% uh, or so grew by, penet by improved penetration, but 60% grew by uh, improving both uh, penetration and frequency, which means, in a nutshell, it means that you have to get more people in and you have to get them to use you more for, for a brand to grow. How do you do that? And uh, the thing, uh, the other complication in a sense is that it, it varies. The importance of loyalty versus penetration varies if you, depending on the category you are. So if you're a habit category like coffee, uh, it is likely to be penetration that will help you grow. If you are spirits or liquor, it is, uh, you will do better by trying to grow. Uh, frequency. Also, uh, brand size makes a difference. Smaller brands, uh, I mean, it's kind of intuitive and uh, it's a bit of a motherhood. Smaller brands grow by getting new buyers in, uh, whereas uh, larger brands have to, have to get their existing buyers to buy more. And the source of new users also varies, meaning that if you are a large brand, you uh, you have to go outside and get new users, but if you're a small brand, you grow from competition. So if we were to put all, this, uh, you know, all these uh, findings that we have from all the large, big data that Kanta has, is there a framework that we can use to help guide us uh, in, uh, in how do we make our brands grow? Thus far, we've said that it's... Uh, you have to look at both penetration and loyalty and one size fits all marketing does not work. It depends on the size of your brand and the category you're in. So if you were to put this together in a simple two by two matrix, this is what it looks like. And these are the guidelines that our, uh, our big data in a sense offers. Let's look at each of them and see, look at brands that have managed to do do you know play by the rules in in a, in a sense without even knowing that they were playing by the rules? Uh, the first one is if you are a big brand in a category that is habitual, you would you would do well to actually expand the category, which means leverage your size. Uh, there could be disruptors, competitive disruptors. You must head those off. You must maintain your brand m meaning and relevance, and you must invade ad adjacencies, meaning grow. If in your category uh, there is less headroom for growth, uh, grow outside your category. And uh, a brand that has done this exceedingly well is Cadbury's, which has taken on traditional sweet gifting occasions. It actually moved from children to adult, from sweet gifting to all occasions, to festivals, it also, uh, uh, I think, did, um, uh, one is occasions, it looked at uh, uh, 
indulgent self-consumption, individual consumption versus uh, group and family kind of consumption. Uh, and we know that it's done it successfully. The other one is uh, redefine your category, which really is if you're a big brand and in an infrequent category, uh, drive salience, which is always be, pre always be salient, always be present, target category rejectors and create new usage occasions. And I don't think Ravi is here yet, but Tanishk is a, is a great example of that because it moved from you know, jewelry buying from neighborhood dweller to, to trust in a brand, premiumized the category and brought in far more modern attitudes to jewelry buying than, and in fact, Ravi was telling us earlier today that Nirav Modi has, uh, the Nirav Modi saga has actually helped them and they've grown even further uh, after all those, uh, after the Nirav Modi saga because there is now trust in the brand. I mean, the brand is the, is the uh, way of looking at, of communicating trust. If you're a brand which is in a habitual, a small brand in a habitual category, then you're looking at actually driving dis differentiation, looking at a challenger brand strategy and disrupting habits. And an, a good example of this is Bira, which has done exactly that. Uh, it's crafty, it's quirky, it's very contemporary and it's created and driven differentiation. It's just changed the rules of the game in many ways. And finally, if you're a small brand in an infrequent category, you actually have to create need or create that desire and stay, start small, stay focused, and drive differentiation. Example of this, uh, I think everybody knows this, which is a category that didn't actually exist, the need existed, and it has actually changed the fortunes of Saregama in the way that they have uh, done Karwa. So those are some of the guidelines. But if you look at everything that the two people before me said and every, all the examples that I've given, uh, differentiation is essential for growth. That's like hygiene. But in today's world, the real winners don't think only about dif differentiation, they think about disruption. And if you look at all the successes that have happened in the recent past, it has been about disruption. Disruption can happen in any part of the value change. It can be functional disruption, it can be emotional disruption, it can be disruption in value. And here are some examples of brands that have done that. But I'll go back to what I started with uh, and leave you with the thought that think about brand Modi and what did he do? Which elements of these marketing principles did he use to actually disrupt uh, the Indian voter? Thank you.